In this chapter, we learn about the Prebisch-Singer theory in detail. The hypothesis developed by Rolf Prebisch and Hans Singer is considered as a major part of the dependency theory developed, which supports the argument that resources flow from underdeveloped to developed countries at the expense of the former. The idea of import substitution industrialization (ISI) is also based on the ground of this theory. After studying this module, you shall be able to first know how terms of trade change over time with respect to agriculture and manufactured goods. Second, learn the explanations behind change in terms of trade. Third, identify the gains from trade. Fourth, analyze the evidence which supports and disregards the theory. First, we shall understand what the theory states. In economics, the Prebisch-Singer hypothesis, also called as the Prebisch-Singer thesis, argues that the price of primary commodities declines relative to the price of manufactured goods over the long term, which causes the terms of trade of primary product-based economies to deteriorate. As of 2013, recent statistical studies have given modern support for the idea. The idea was initially developed by Hans Singer in 1948-49 and expanded by Rolf Prebisch shortly thereafter. Since that time, it has served a major pillar of dependency theory and policies such as Import Substitution Industrialization (ISI). A common explanation for this supposed phenomenon is that manufactured goods have a greater income elasticity of demand than primary products, especially food. Therefore, as income rises, the demand for manufactured goods increases more rapidly than the demand for primary products. In addition, primary products have a low price elasticity of demand. So, a decline in their prices tends to reduce revenue rather than increase it. This theory implies that the very structure of the global market is responsible for the persistent inequality within the world system. This provides an interesting twist on Wall Street's new Marxist interpretation of the international order which falls difference in the power relations between core and periphery states as the chief cause for economic and political inequality. However, the Singer Prebisch thesis also works with different bargaining positions of labor in developed and developing countries. As a result, the hypothesis enjoyed a high degree of popularity in the 1960s and 1970s with neo Marxist developmental economics and even provided a justification for an expansion of the role of commodity futures exchange as a tool for development. Singer and Prebisch noticed a similar statistical pattern in long-run historical data on relative prices. But such regularity is consistent with a number of different explanations and policy stances. Later in his career, Prebisch argued that due to declining terms of trade primary producers face, Developing countries should strive to diversify their economies and lessen dependence on primary commodity exports by developing their manufacturing industry. The hypothesis has lost some of its relevance in the last 30 years as exports of simple manufacturers have overtaken exports of primary commodities in most developing countries outside of Africa. For this reason, much of the recent research focuses less on the relative prices of primary products and manufactured goods and more on the relationship between the prices of simple manufacturers produced by developing countries and of complex manufacturers produced by advanced economies. Now we shall discuss the theory in detail. The Hypothesis the Prebisch Singer hypothesis was initially developed by Hans Singer in 1948 49 and was later developed by Rolf Prebisch. 
it argues that prices of primary commodities will decline over time relative to manufactured goods which leads to a decline in terms of trade for developing countries as developing countries are usually the exporter of primary products and the developed nations the producer and exporter of manufactured goods. However, through this relationship, Prebish and Singer focused on the rising per capita income gap between the developing and developed world arising due to the international trade. According to them, due to this static specialization in the production of primary commodities, developing world has been excluded from enjoying the fruits of technological progress mainly found in the industrial nations. They argued this on the basis of three facts. First, developing countries specialize in the production and export of primary commodities and industrialized countries specializes in production of manufactures. Second, technical progress is mainly concentrated in industries. Third, terms of trade of primary goods relative to manufactured goods has declined since 19th century. Due to these facts, developing countries has failed to benefit from the technical progress and have suffered from the decline in terms of trade. Moving on to the classical school of thought. The classical economists, however, had an exactly opposite approach to what conceived by Prebish and Singer. They thought that primary products will over time experience a rise in terms of trade relative to manufactured. They based their argument on the basis that diminution returns operate in primary products, production and manufacturers experience increasing returns. Also the technical progress in manufacturers will exceed that of primary products and hence supply of manufacturers will grow faster than the supply of primary commodities. Also primary products in producing countries need not industrialize as trade will increase the price of exports of primary products relative to the price of imports of manufactured goods. This can be better explained with the help of a diagram. The vertical axis shows the relative price of primary products in terms of manufactured products and the horizontal axis shows the relative quantity, the quantity of primary products divided by the quantity of manufactured goods. The supply and demand curves intersection show the world equilibrium at point E. As technical progress in manufactured goods exceed that of primary goods, the relative supply of manufacture increases while the relative supply of primary products decline. As the relative supply curve S1 shifts to the left, the relative price of primary product rises and the relative quantity declines. The new equilibrium is at E2 now and the terms of trade for primary product export rises. This leads to the welfare gain from primary product exporting nations. However, according to Prebish and Singer, this doesn't work. The terms of trade for primary product relative to manufacturers actually declines. The reason for the same is explained in the next section. Next, we discuss the evolution of the theory. According to Prebish and Singer, mechanism doesn't work. The relative price of primary goods actually fall and this has been empirically seen in the case of United Kingdom from 1876 to 1947. This was shown by Hans Singer then working in the United Nations Department of Economics Affairs in New York City. In his paper titled Post-War Price Relations Between Underdeveloped and Industrialized Countries. Its subsequent follow-up by the United Nations in 1949 led actually to the origin of the Prebish Singer hypothesis and the related debate. It was observed in these reports that during the 60 years preceding 1938, primary product prices had fallen relative to prices of manufacturers. Now we discuss the various explanations of Prebish Singer hypothesis. Explanation by Prebish, supply side argument. 
According to Previs, labor unions work well in industrialized nations and are weak in developing nations. Hence, workers are able to extract higher wages in industrial nations as compared to primary product producing nations. This decline in the cost increases the relative supply of primary products, shifting the relative supply curve to the right and the relative price decreases, leading to a decline in terms of trade. Explanation by Singer Demand Side Argument Singer's argument is based on income and price elasticities. It is usually observed that primary products have low income elasticities. So, as and when income rises, the demand for primary commodities declines rapidly than the demand for manufactured goods, leading to a decline in the relative price of primary goods. This would lead to a leftward shift in the relative demand curve, leading to a worsening of the terms of trade for developing nations. Both Prebish and Singer advocated that developing countries should industrialize. Moving on to the empirical evidence, the Prebish Singer hypothesis has generated much debate. It has been criticized by the academicians such as Jacob Weiner, 1953, R. E. Baldwin, 1955, G. M. Mayer, 1958, G. Heberler, 1961, R. E. Lee, 1963, Harry Johnson, 1967, Paul Baroch, 1975, Ronald Finlay, 1981, and hence discarded the hypothesis. It is criticized on the grounds that if it will be reasonable to treat the relative price of goods equivalent to the terms of trade. Developing countries do not export only primary goods and developed countries do not only specialize in manufactured goods. So commodity prices cannot be treated as synonymous to terms of trade. The fact that industrialized countries do not export only manufacturers was addressed early by Mayer and Baldwin, 1957, who pointed out the many primary commodities like wheat, beef, wool, cotton and sugar are heavily exported by industrialized countries. Indeed, Dikoswa and Scandizo note that the developing countries' share of agricultural primary commodities was only 30% in 1983, down from 40% in 1955. Yet, Sprerau's 1980 argues that this fact is immaterial because the same trends that are observed in the broad index of primary commodity prices are found in the narrower index that includes only developing country products. Since the 1980s, a series of studies undertaken by John Spiros, 1980, David Sapsford, 1985, Parbijit Sarkar, 1986-1994-2005, Sarkar and Singer, 1991, E. R. Grilly and M. C. Yang, 1988, and many others questioned the validity of the criticism and provided strong statistical support for the Prebish Singer's hypothesis, thereby bringing it back into the limelight. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. Prebish Singer hypothesis acts as a major pillar of the dependency theory and imports substituting industrialization. The hypothesis argues that the prices of primary commodities will decline over time relative to the manufactured goods which leads to a decline in terms of trade for developing countries. In making this argument, it is assumed that the developing countries are exporter of primary products and developed countries are the exporter of manufactured commodities. The classicals thought that primary products will over time experience a rise in terms of trade relative to manufacturers. They based their argument on the higher technical progress experienced by manufacturers. Prebish and Singer, however, have a different argument to offer based on asymmetries and elasticities. The Prebish Singer hypothesis has generated much debate. It has been widely criticized and then supported by various academicians all over the globe.